Hey, you all. Thank you very much. On behalf of the migrant workers that we represent, 11,000 under union agreements on over 600 farms from Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Ohio, and Michigan. On behalf of the elected board of migrant workers, our officers, Vice President Justin Flores, Secretary Treasurer Christiana Velasquez Wagner, we proudly accept this uh, Labor Defenders uh, Award. We're very grateful and very grateful for all the friends that are here, Sherrod, Marcy. Uh, I don't know Senator Harkin, but I hear he's a pretty cool guy. And, uh, and uh, uh, George Miller testified in one of his uh, committees one time. I was very happy to uh, debate a little back and forth with one of those North Carolina colleagues of yours. And um, um, we, uh, we came here because, um, nice award, thank you very much, uh, but I was interested in the, my brother Rafael from Malawi, because, um, you know, we've been fighting big tobacco now for seven years. For the first five years, they said they never talked to us. Of course, Campbell Soup did that back in the 80s, too. They went like six years and said they'd never talk to us. Uh, the Heinz USA Company said they'd never talk to us. Uh, the Dean Foods, and Jane, Green Bay Foods, said that when we started our campaigns, they said they'd never talked. The Mon Olive Pickle Company, you all remember the Mon Olive Pickle Boycott. They said for five years they had never talked to us. So the tobacco companies for five years said they'd never talked to us. And now they're talking to us, uh, all of them, not just Reynolds America. Uh, but they're not talking about the right things. They want to do what um, is the, the biggest trick that they pull on poor people in this country. They want to make us charity cases instead of a fair day's pay for a fair day of work. So um, we're sort of heading them off at the corners. I learned two lessons in my organizing career. Uh, that are very important. One, the only time I ever met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And that was back in 1968 when I got a telegram at Bluffton College where I was going. I spent a year getting arrested uh, for organizing migrant workers. So he invites me to come to Atlanta uh, to help plan the Poor People's Campaign. And the lesson I learned in that meeting, the conversations that we had late into the night uh, with uh, uh, Andy Young and uh, Reverend Abernathy and Dr. King. Um, the discussion came down to how do we as poor people who have nothing compel the world's largest corporations and the richest people to sit down and negotiate equally with us. And I remember Dr. King's remarks. He says, um, and to me these are the most famous words he ever spoke, not I have a dream. Uh, his words, he said, when you impede the rich man's ability to make money, anything is negotiable. <laughs> the second lesson I learned was from Cesar Chavez. I spent a lot of time with Cesar, uh, and uh, when we did the royal headquarters of Campbell Soup, and uh, we had a lot of discussions about organizing. We're always talking about organizing. How do we organize this? How do we overcome this obstacle? How do we do this, that, and this, and that? He said that, um, you know, in the end, we farm workers, the only thing we got to invest in this fight is our time. The rich people have to invest their money because all their executives, if they go around to debate against us like Reynolds Tobacco is doing right now and Campbell Soup did, uh, they have to pay those executives high salaries and wages, so they're investing money to fight us. And he said there's a lot more time than there is money and money's gonna run out before time. So as long as you don't give up, something's gotta happen. So uh, that's been our formula for fighting these guys all these years. Now going back to the tobacco, see that the, the, the contest is really the same. It's really the same. And uh, don't get caught up in strategies that are sort of winning strategies. Everybody says, give me your plan. Uh, what, what's going to really going to be the, the, the winning strategy? The winning strategy is fighting. Uh, and uh, sometimes you don't know what the winning strategy is. You got to just keep trying. A good organizer just tries different things until you find something that works. We don't know what some of those things are sometimes. We just keep trying different things and then when it starts working, you'll know because you get their attention. Do we have their attention? Yeah, we got their attention. Not only Reynolds, but Philip Morris uh, International, 
Altria, Philip Morris USA, Japanese Tobacco, uh, Alliance One, Universal Leaf. Uh, they're all in the room now talking to us about issues in the tobacco industry. Well, they've made us fight for seven years, so we decided after meeting uh, Rafael that uh, we're going to up the ante and say, look, we're not only want you to sign an agreement with Flock guaranteeing freedom of association, we want you to sign an international agreement guaranteeing freedom of association for workers all over the world where you buy tobacco. So we're developing a strategy with Rafael, the Malawi Workers Union and the, and the Flock Union. Uh, we want to join, uh, create a joint global strategy and put together uh, the, the proposal to all these tobacco companies as early as uh, October of this next year when we're our next meeting with them. So we're looking for support from you all. Now what that's going to take, the U.S. can be a good source to win this global tobacco fight because we're the consumers and we have a lot of leverage in this country. So stay tuned for perhaps calling a boycott of McLean Distribution that is a subsidiary of Berkshire Hathaway, a Warren Buffett company that has three major convenience store retailers that account for one third of Big Tobacco's consolidated revenue. That's 7-Eleven, Wawa, and the kangaroo chain stores in the south. And if we get something that our consumers can get their hands on saying, if we boycott these stores, now see, we're farm workers, right? Thank God now we're not under the NLRA because we can do secondary boycotts. So we can go after them with your help. We can get McLean and Warren Buffett to yell at Reynolds Tobacco to sign these international labor agreements to support these poor people because in the end, that's what it is, isn't it not? We are marginalized workers, and everybody talks about how do we fight the, glowing, the growing gap between the rich and the poor globally and, and, and the polarization of wealth throughout the world. Well, we got to give the people rights to, ed, to educate our, our own selves and to demand the things that allow us to feed, educate, and close our own family. Please do not throw charity at us. We don't want food stamps. We don't want uh, 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 subsidized uh, medicine or, or what do you call it, uh, migrant clinics and migrant this and migrant that. We want a fair day's pay for a fair day of work and we'll take care of our own families. And let me tell you, I've seen the trajectory of fights in agriculture since the 1950s when my family first started coming in on the backs of those, uh, those uh, 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 flatbed trucks with wooden sideboards and a canvas thrown over top where there's six or seven families crammed in the back. That was the late 1950s when our family started coming to Ohio to harvest crops into Michigan and Ohio. And those were the days of segregation, was it not? We had two routes to come to Ohio, up through, uh, up through the Panhandle to hit Route 66, come over through St. Louis, and the southern route through Texarkana, Little Rock, up into Memphis through southern Ohio. And let me tell you, in those days, we remember those signs, no Mexicans or dogs allowed. We remember those signs, uh, 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 no blacks, Mexicans, or dogs. And we remember those uh, black drinking, as, as Sheriff Brown was said, those black drinking fountains and white drinking fountains. And us Mexicans didn't know which drinking fountains to drink from. <laughs> but I'm telling you that in, in, in that experience, and, and, uh, and, and, being, and, and, and being met in Ohio with the squalor and the conditions that we face is something that no human can take forever. Somebody's got to say, this is enough. This is where it stops. And you know what? We have to make a permanent commitment to fight, to struggle, find the creative ways to get their attention and negotiate the things that are going to make a difference in our lives. And remember, in overall, in the trajectory of history, you can look at it. The Israelites had Moses, but for every Moses, there had to be a Joshua. And for every Joshua, there had to be a Moses. We've had our Dr. Martin Luther Kings, we've had our Cesar Chavez's. In this room are the people, the, the next Joshua's, are the next Dr. King, and the next Cesar Chavez's. Padalante, engage the fight and the struggle, and something is going to happen sooner or later. God bless you all.